Okay, so we're in Pro Tools and I'm just going to go through some of the things that I've got set up on the Stream Deck. Um, I'm not going to go through everything that you can do on the Stream Deck possible because honestly, the possibilities are endless. But I'm just going to give you an idea of what you can do by showing you what I have here programmed on my Stream Deck. So in the top left, we have, um, we have a button that sends a selected track to a new playlist. If you're not a Pro Tools user, new playlist is basically just like where you put things to the side, I guess. So if an artist says, yeah, that was a good take, but put it to the side, I want to do another one, then you send it to a new playlist. Normally, you'd have to right click, go to move to, and then go to new playlist. But with the Elgato Stream Deck, I can just press one button and it gets moved down to a new playlist and it's, you know, it's out of the way. The uh, next button over, we have the button that switches between the mix window and the, the edit window. Obviously, usually you'd have to press control and equals to do that. Whereas now we just got it on one button. Really quick, really simple. These top three buttons here is, are to switch through between my tools. So obviously if I want to do, if I want to shorten a clip, I press that one. If I want to select a clip, I press the middle one. Or if I just want to use the grabber tool, I can do that. Or if I want to use the, the multi-function tool, I can press all three of them just as you would do with this you know just really quick really easy um way to do it uh this magnifying glass here oh oh yeah by the way all of these pictures i've chosen you can select whatever pictures you want you know if you wanted to have like a picture of i don't know some boobs or something you can do that completely up to you um i just try to keep it pretty simple so i know what i'm pressing um so the magnifying glass will it make the selected track really big, you know, and then I can zoom in for when I'm like cutting out some some S's or some plosives or some breaths or something like that. I can just get really big in there and then press it again to go back to normal. And then these are to zoom in and out. We have the slip function and the grid. So that makes it switch between moving it, you know, oops, moving it to the grid or to have it on slip. We've got the scissors tool here, which is just, basically what it says on a tin you can cut your cut your track using that um this button here is my transport window i don't know why but getting up that transport window is always jarring for me like going to window i can never remember the shortcut so i like having a button there that just brings it up really quickly um this is my memory locations so I press that button, all my memory locations come up. So if I want to skip to, to one or two or whatever, I can do that. And then these last two are the most interesting ones. So these last two buttons have scripts programmed to them. Um, and this is a Windows thing, I believe. There is a different way you do it in Logic than what you do in Windows. But if you're a Windows user, then you're going to have to use auto hotkeys. And basically, so if I wanted to do a tape stop, so yeah, let me just explain. So this button here is a tape stop or like the drill sensor effect as some people call it. And this button here reverses audio. So if I wanted to take this little section here and do a tape stop to it, I can press this button and it makes a tape stop. So normally I'd have to click on audio suite, click on pitch shift, then click on verify and then click render and that will do a tape stop. And when I'm working on like a drill song where the artist wants like a hundred thousand things censored, that is long. Whereas now I've just got a button that I can press and it does it really quickly. And if you're wondering what the hell happened, because you can see the mouse moving and stuff like that. I, when I press that button, it runs a script and I'll get the script up for you now so you can see what it is. So this probably looks like jargon. If you've never worked with scripts or code or anything like that, this probably looks like jargon, but I promise once you do a little bit of research, you realize that these can be quite easy to set up. Um, so basically the script is saying, select in Pro Tools window, you go into audio suite, click and pitch shift, click and verify. And then it's looking for the render button. So I basically I had to, um, uh, and I'll show you that as well. So it's basically looking for that. I took a screenshot of the render button. It's looking for that. And obviously when you have the verify open, the render button's there. So it will look for that and then click on it. Uh, wait, where's the script? Here it is. So yeah, it will look for it. Once it's found it, it will click and then close the window. And that's what you're seeing happen when all of that stuff happens. 
It's doing all of that stuff, but just in a split second. And I think that is dope, man. And you can do anything. You can you can write a script to open up YouTube and search Josh Mixed It. And you press that one button and it will do that in, in a second. And this that's what makes this thing so dope. And then the other button here is to reverse. So, you know, if you want to reverse a word, I can do that. I just press the button and it does the same thing. It reverses and you know if you want to see the script for that i can show you that as well audio suite other reverse so normally you would have to go audio suite other and then um reverse and then press render whereas this script is doing all of that in a split second and that's really really what the game changer is it's not just a, a, a thing that just runs shortcuts it's not that you can put macros on there. You can do a whole bunch of different stuff. It's crazy. So let me show you what the, the actual program looks like and how you can customize it. So this is what the kind of how you customize it. So you can select a picture and to kind of prove to you can put any picture on there. And again, I'm not here to show you how to set this up. There are plenty of videos out there. If you do want to see me actually set one up, if I get enough feedback, then I will do that. But for example, if I wanted to change this to a picture of, let me see, what, what should I change it to? Should I change it to a picture of a Magnum? Uh, no, we're not gonna do that. Say I wanted to change it, for example, say if this was a shortcut to open up Instagram and you can do that, then I can drag that over there. And as you can see, we've got, we've got an Instagram picture right there. I used to have it, so I pressed the button, it would hide everything but the drums, for example. Or I pressed the button, it would hide everything but the vocals. And then another button would show all. Like really, really intricate stuff um, that if you've got the time, you can set it up and do all of that for it. Um, but yeah, I think personally, I think it's not going to be long until you see one of these in every studio because they're that useful. Um, and that's basically all there is to it.